hey guys welcome back to the channel colin mcgraw here oh guys closing day on the house i'm excited i'm excited but i'm actually sick i'm actually sick um i got my ibuprofen right here <laughs> i'm drinking some coffee i'm on the upswing so i'm almost out of the sickness i'm actually running late right now but i was dying to get some dunkin donuts so I'm a little all over the map right now, but big day, I'm excited. And in this episode, I'm gonna tell you guys how I did it, 29 years old, this is my process. So I got my notes um, in this notebook. I pretty much wrote down everything from all the way from my goal when I originally was deciding, you know what, I'm pulling the trigger, I'm getting a place. <laughs> and then I even wrote down like every step of like weekly goals, like what I had to do that week to move along. So I have it all written down here. So I'm gonna talk to you everything about you know, how I decided on my strategy, financing, getting an attorney. I'm gonna walk you step by step about what I did. So guys, I made this decision in June 3rd that I was gonna do this. So I wrote down my schedule. In June, I was gonna pre-qualify for financing, have a firm budget in mind so I know what I could buy for a house and keep educating myself. And that's where I was listening to bigger podcasts, podcasts, probably one, two episodes a day. Learned a ton, really, really helped me out. July. Uh, I wanted to start contacting real estate agents to get the initial tours going. August, September, I was gonna house hunt and secure the house. That was gonna be the bulk time I was looking and pull the trigger when I find the right investment property. And then one month of prep time before going live on Airbnb in October, I've just launched my Airbnb listening. It's been up for two weeks now and I got my first booking. So I hit my plan to a T in terms of timing. I crushed it. Uh, don't worry, there were definitely some bumps, but I crushed this uh, this goal. So write down your plan to, to hold yourself accountable. Give you guys a quick little update. I'm uh, 20 minutes out from the house where I'm gonna be doing a walkthrough and then driving over to my attorney's office to sign all the paperwork. So I'm excited. However, <laughs> I just got an email from my attorney an hour ago saying the wire transfer hasn't hit his account yet. So little nervous <laughs> just check my bank account and the funds have been taken out so I'm getting flashbacks if you haven't seen my old video I had an apartment scam when I moved to New York a year ago <laughs> uh, so I'm getting flashbacks PTSD is kicking in I'm, I'm almost positive everything's gonna be all right it's, it's like an hour lag time so I'm hoping if he checks now they'll be in there but guys so I'm going for an investment property so Going for an investment property, I had a couple problems with getting financing. For me, my employment history is a little scattered. <laughs> if you've been watching the channel, you know I was living in Colombia for two years. I was working remotely for a bit, but then I quit and started my own business. My own business wasn't profitable, so I wasn't taking an income in. So I probably looked like, uh, I just was like, a bank's not gonna take a flyer on me. They're not gonna, they're like, look at this guy. He's not gonna, he's not gonna pay back the loan. Um, so I realized that the hard way, I got declined from a lot of banks. Um, I wasn't going for a primary residence, so a secondary is a little bit different of a loan. So I struggled with getting financing. And then I discovered the DSCR loan, debt service coverage ratio loan. That's what I had to do to get a loan. And the thing that's so great about these types of loans, they're basing it based off of if you have a great credit score, which I do, no problem. <laughs> and if you, if the rent from the property is going to pay off the loan. If they can calculate that based off of other properties in the area, it looks like it'll pay off the loan. The bank will loan you money. So that's the route I went. It's easier to acquire. The downside with it is it's higher interest rates. So mortgage rates are already tough right now. Um, I locked in a rate of 9.125%. That is my rate. And when I tell people that, they call me crazy. But I did all the calculations my calculations say I'm still going to come back with a 20% return on this house. So for me, that's a good deal. Even if I break even, there's a lot of buffer there. And guess what? I can always refinance. I can refinance in a couple of years when rates come down and I can bring it back down. So you're not locked in to the rate. So I think people are always scared about jumping into buying a house because they're scared of the rates. Don't be scared of the rates. Look at it as a long-term play not initially like i'm not locked into 9.125 percent for the next 10 years i'm locked in for a little bit until hopefully rates come down yeah so guys i'm going after a dscr loan so i found a bank that was gonna give me the loan so i got pre-qualified once i got pre-qualified i started figuring out the amount of money i needed to put up front with a dscr loan for mine i had to put up 25 percent. so that's my down payment on the house 
keep in mind to have an additional, like I would say five, 6% for closing costs. Um, so basically like 30 to 35% of the house value I need to have in my bank account. And it's nice to have a little buffer as well because things are gonna come up. So that's how I came up with my budget and that's how I found out, all right, I feel comfortable spending up to $350,000. That's me, again, me personally, that's what I felt comfortable with. So that's what I went forward with, 350K. I've got my budget, I've got my pre-qualification letter. Let's go hunting, let's go find a house. All right, I'm on a tight schedule here. I gotta pound these donuts. stores put in a couple offers the market was really tough right now so to be honest I never could get a good feel of should I be go should I be sending in offers under market value should I be sending it uh, at at the listing price or should I be sending over a little tip I learned from Barbara Corcoran she, she said this on bigger pockets like she always overpays always overpays for real estate because it always goes up and that whatever that one percent ten percent that $10,000 you're saving in the beginning stages, you're not even gonna be thinking about it 10 years later. It's gonna just be minimal. So I was like, you know what? I'm not losing this house, this is my house. <laughs> so I got it. I got it for listing price, $340,000. House under contract. So that's step number one, guys. Just getting the house under contract is such a big accomplishment. So take a minute. Take a minute when you get a house under contract and celebrate that. That's a big win, big time win. Enjoy that moment. All right, now here's the next roller roller coaster. Now you're going back up. <laughs> now you're going back up the roller coaster and there's a lot of work to do still. I get the call Friday. My offer's accepted. By Monday, I need to have the first $1,000 as a down payment or like a first deposit put in the account, securing basically the label that we're under contract and we're working now. Number two, select an attorney. Um, again, have a good real estate agent. I was a newbie. I wasn't even going to consider doing this without a real estate agent. With your real estate agent, ask them to send you some uh, attorney suggestions. I'm not going to research this on my own just because if I'm going through a reputable real estate agent, they'll have attorneys that they can provide for you. Just sign the paperwork, baby. Woo! Guys, that was stressful. I'm, I'm so excited. It's kind of like hit me. I'm a, I'm, I'm a homeowner. But, but this is what happened. Everything was going smooth. Everything was going smooth. But the wire hadn't hit. The wire hadn't hit. So it's 4 o'clock. I'm on the phone with Charles Schwab, my bank. I'm like, where's the wire? Hit the funds are out of my account. What's going on? It's all gonna blow up. I'm gonna be sleeping in my car the weekend. I'm panicking. Um, then I just hear out of the corner of my attorney, I got it. <laughs> Let's go, baby. So now it's done. Now like the excitement's like kind of rushing in. Um, all the paperwork's done. It's all smooth. It's officially in my name. So now I've gotta put my money where my mouth is. Let's hope I make this property work. But at the end of the day, I love this house. I'm so excited. Number three, select an inspector. That's the next big thing. And you usually have a time frame you need to complete this in like within 14 days, I wanna say, of having the house under contract, something like that. So I didn't even mess about with this. I got this all done like right away. Like, Also, when you get the house under contract, now you need to call your bank. Now you need to go through the formal pre-approval to put on the steps for approval for the house. So contact your bank immediately. Then again, within the first week, we're still in the first week here at the house close being on, under contract send the second deposit. So basically, I, like I said, I had to put down 25% down. I had to wire the rest of the money. It's a long process, so really work with your bank. Don't delay, get it done, just knock it out, even though it's really annoying. Um, but make sure you get all your ducks in a row. It's a long process. The reason that it's felt like such an archaic process going through it, but it's so long because you have a lot of different parties that are talking to each other to make sure this house is transferred into your name. You have an attorney that's on your side and is representing you so you don't get screwed. So select a good attorney. You have the bank that's talking to the attorney. You have the real estate agent talking to you and talking to um, 
uh, your bank if needed. Like there's a lot of different variables that need to be talking to each other. Seller's agent needs to be talking to your real estate agent. So it's, it's kind of just like you're building a star here of just like people that need to talk to each other to get this all together to be official. So you don't get screwed, so the seller doesn't get screwed. Um, so everyone walks away. Tip number one though, guys, if you're closing on a house, I learned this on the Bigger Pockets podcast. Actually, this would be two tips. Tip number one, listen to the Bigger Pockets podcast if you're looking to invest in real estate. Or if you're just a first time homeowner, it's actually just really good information. I think they do a pretty good job on that podcast. Number two, don't ever schedule your closing on a Friday. I heard this on the podcast after mine was already scheduled, um, but this is the main reason. If the wire pushed a day, if there was some problem or something like that, I would have been sleeping in my car because everything's closed on the weekend or I, I would have gotten a hotel. Um, but that's why you always schedule your, your closing, not on a Friday. Give yourself a couple day buffer before the weekend. But anyways, let's go, let's go to my house my house <laughs> now i need to get insurance for the place there are some specific requirements i need for insurance so little tip for you guys um make sure a good real estate agent is going to do this no matter what but make sure you have an inspection in denim so you can pull out of a real estate sale if it's if something comes up in the inspection you don't like and you get scared and you're like oh my god the roof's about to cave in or the foundation's bad you can pull out of a sale make sure you have that inspection in denim when you send over your formal offer for a house i had that in so once the inspection report comes back and I'm reading through everything, I'm talking to the inspector, I'm seeing if there's any big red flags that would that would make me wanna pull out. Like this is this is just not gonna work. Then another big thing, this is an appraisal. This is um for my loan, they need you need to have an appraisal set up because if if the house I put money in for was three hundred forty thousand, but it came back like three hundred ten thousand. Um, the bank might not loan me the money because the, you're getting a bad deal here. There's, there's some problems with it. You're way overpaying. We don't think you should be going for this house. Um, also to protect yourself too, so you don't feel like you're getting screwed in the deal. All right, guys, I'm walking around the house like a madman. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the house, by the way. I'm in the house. <laughs> I'm so excited. Like I'm already ripping things off the wall. Like this is my house now. <laughs> um, all right, this is what I've got. I'm, I'm kind of talking to myself at the same time here. I uh, unfroze my credit because I had to do a credit check for um, TV. Uh, yeah, yeah, setting up my internet and TV. So that's coming. That should be all good tomorrow. Count set up. Just got to call them tomorrow, get a modem. And I've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> but yeah, look at, this. look at this. Look at this crap on the windows. We need light in the house. Let's get rid of that right now. Let's see. You guys are going to witness this. If I can figure it out. Oh yeah, let's get rid of that. <laughs> All right, step number, tip number two, get in your own house, start making it your own. <laughs> if you have any questions, I literally just went through this process, so I'm happy to help answer any questions because I'm. this is my first house. I'm a first time home buyer, just went through it. I had a million questions, I didn't care. I wasn't, I wasn't gonna act like prideful and be like, oh, I'm not gonna ask that, like, like I should know that. No, no, no. Ask every question you have to everyone in the, in the process to make sure you know what you're getting into. And that was my process, guys. Got the house. I'm happy. All right, I'm gonna go watch the Dolphins game now. Fins up. <laughs> See you guys.